Armor perks are back on armor, which I think is just great. But what perks should you be looking out for? What do some of them even do? That's what we're going to be finding out today in this video with information more dense than a dying sun. We're going to be going slot by slot and just kind of talking about what the perks are in each armor slot, what they do, and the trends of each armor slot. And then the second half of the video, we're going to make two example god roll armor sets. So if you don't really care about what the perks are, what they do, or anything, you can just skip to that. But first, let's talk perk tiers. There are three tiers of perks. Tier 1 will say slightly increases which is the smallest effect. Tier two will not have an adjective, and tier three is the enhanced version of a perk, which gives the greatest effect. Enhanced perks at the moment only come on Dreaming City armor and raid armor, along with exotics. While I haven't tested every single combination of perk against its enhanced and only slightly increased counterparts, I have no reason to believe that you shouldn't try to get the enhanced version of any perk that can roll enhanced. The only reason I think an enhanced perk would not be as good is because of some weird technical issue. That being said, there already has been a case where the enhanced version of part of a perk wasn't as good as a tier 2 version, but for the most part, you probably don't need to worry about these very, very fringe cases. The Helm Slot revolves around targeting perks, super energy perks, special weapon reserves, and power weapon reserves. The Helm Slot can roll any individual armor targeting perks, literally every type of weapon, not to mention that it can roll enhanced targeting on some weapons as well, or it can roll a clustered targeting perk, like all precision weapons. Targeting perks improve accuracy, target acquisition, and aim down sight speed on that weapon. Target acquisition is more relevant on console than it is on PC, or maybe rather those on controller compared to mouse and keyboard. It is essentially the stick factor on a weapon, how effective that weapon is to sticking onto a target when you lock onto one. That's not to say that targeting perks are completely worthless on PC, because they do have other values like bullet magnetism. Accuracy is mainly a hip fire based bonus, but again, also has other slight benefits for aim down sights. The enhanced targeting perks that can roll on a helm are for hand cannon, bow, sniper, and linear fusion. Next up, we have Super Energy Perks, where you get bonus Super Energy on Grenade, or Melee, or Shotgun, or Sniper, or Heavy Weapon Kills. Heavy Weapon and Grenade Kills can roll the Enhanced Perk in the Helm Slot. So how much energy are we even talking here? Well, a normal Super with no mods, with no action, takes 5 minutes to charge. You're completely idle. Pump Action, the shotgun bonus, reduces this by about 5 to 6 seconds, or about 1.7% cooldown reduction per kill, with Remote Connection, aka Sniper Kills, giving about a 7 second reduction. Ashes to Assets is approximately the same thing, with Enhanced Ashes to Assets being about 9 seconds. Hands On is about 9 seconds in reduction, with two kills back to back giving us a super in 4 minutes and 42 seconds, or an 18 second reduction. Heavy lifting was also approximately 9 seconds. Keep in mind, all of these reductions include the energy gained from a kill as well as the bonus. Some of this seems a little bit off to me, like why is Grenade the weakest when it takes the longest to regenerate? Heavy lifting is on any power weapon, which seems really good, but then again, I guess it's the power weapon which is ammo limited. Hands-on seems really good, but maybe that's because of the risk factor on it. Yeah, I don't know why the cooldowns are the way that they are, but just, yeah, those are, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Then we have the reserves perk. These perks increase the maximum size of your reserves for that particular weapon. In the helm slot, we can roll fusion, swords, rockets, grenade launchers, linear fusion, shotgun, and sniper reserves. So, non-primary weapons. You can also roll Special or Heavy Ammo Finder, increasing the frequency of which you find those bricks of ammo on the ground. However, some research was done recently on Reddit by user Box of Rings and Nails and their friends that showed that stacking more than one Heavy Ammo Finder perk may actually have no impact or even a negative impact on the drop rates of Heavy Ammo. 
Bungie knows about this research and say that they are investigating, so for now, I can't recommend stacking this beyond one, and even then it may be difficult to notice a large difference in ammo drops. This perk is not like Ruin Wings from Destiny 1. Moving to the arm slot, this is all about reload speed, a couple more energy perks, and scavenging ammo. Arms can roll any types of reload speed perks, individual weapons, groups of weapons, specific groups of weapons, and grenade launcher, hand cannon, rockets, and shotguns have the possibility of the enhanced reload bonus. To give an example, the difference between enhanced rocket reload and regular rocket reload isn't too crazy, but either of those bonuses makes quite a noticeable difference compared to a standard reload. Then we have some energy-based perks, impact induction and momentum transfer, of which both of these perks can roll the enhanced versions. Momentum transfer gives melee energy on grenade hits, and impact induction gives grenade energy on melee hits. Testing momentum transfer showed that one tick of grenade reduced the cooldown of my melee attack by about 1 to 1.5 seconds. Yeah, that's it. The effect is also on an internal cooldown. Fortunately, enhanced momentum transfer was a reduction of 5 seconds, which is a bit better. I think the internal cooldown of the effect is mainly for grenades that have a damage over time effect, but uh, feel like this would be okay for a buff, or maybe it's just broken and needs a fix. 1 to 1.5 seconds is, is it, nothing. It's nothing. Impact induction has an internal cooldown of about 8 seconds, which makes sense, since you actually have the ability to punch things whenever you want. However, unlike Momentum Transfer, the default Impact Induction bonus gives you 7 seconds worth of cooldown reduction, which leads me to believe that Momentum Transfer is maybe just not even working properly. Then we have Fastball, which increases Grenade Throw Distance. Scavenger is not the same as Reserves, Surprising, to say the least, I know. Scavenger increases the amount of ammo you get for a particular weapon when you pick up a brick of that ammo, whereas Reserves increases the total amount of ammo that you can hold. On the arms, you can roll a Scavenger perk for any non-primary weapon, and I believe this perk works in PvP except for normal fusion rifles, I've been told. You can also roll a Special or Heavy Ammo Finder perk. Works the same exact way as the Helm. Moving on to the chest armor, this is all about your unflinching perk, where you flinch less when being shot at. Every weapon type is featured here, individual weapons, groups of weapons, with bows, snipers, linear fusions, and scouts able to roll the enhanced versions of unflinching. Unflinching is the only thing that can roll in the middle slot, by the way, so don't bother looking for anything else in that column. Then in the right side slot, we have reserve perks for primary weapons, along with primary ammo and special ammo finders. The legs feature dexterity and class ability based perks. Dexterity increases ready and stow speed of weapons. Very important and I think undervalued by the general population in PvP, whereas for PvE, not really as big of a deal. Weapons that can roll enhanced dexterity are hand cannons, shotguns, snipers, and rocket launchers. In that same column are class ability perks that generate energy of some kind. Perpetuation will generate class ability energy when you use your class ability. Bomber generates grenade on class ability use. Outreach is melee energy, and dynamo will generate super energy. Bomber can also roll Enhanced, and Distribution is the other Enhanced perk, which actually gives energy to all abilities. Note that Dynamo and Distribution are currently being looked at by Bungie for being a little too strong when combined with other super energy generating things in PvP. So how much energy are we talking here, Datto? Well, I'll, I'll just tell you. Uh, let's start with Dynamo. A super takes 5 minutes to charge with no activity. Dynamo will reduce the cooldown by 10 seconds, or about 3.33 repeating, of course, percent of your super. Bomber will reduce a grenade cooldown from 121 to 117, so about 4 seconds. And Outreach will do the same for your melee cooldown, 121 to 117, with Hunters getting a 4 second reduction as well. 
Perpetuation reduced Titan Wall cooldown by about three seconds, with Rift being about five to six seconds and Hunter about one to 1.5 seconds. In the right side column, we have scavenger perks for primary weapons, and then we have primary ammo and special ammo finders. The class item revolves around energy and health when you pick up an orb of light. There are five perks that can get you the following. Health regen starts on orb pickup, chunk of health on orb pickup, class ability, grenade, or melee energy, with absolution being the enhanced perk giving energy for all abilities. In the other column, it's just everything. It's reserves and scavenger perks, all ammo finders. It's a mess. It's crazy. This brings us to the question, what the hell should I actually be focusing on for my armor sets? Well, that is going to depend on some of the weapons that you're using, your play style, your class, your subclass, and what you're doing. But let's try to come up with some example god roll armor sets. Note that we will not be including exotics when coming up with this list. The first thing you're going to want to do is have some form of a weapon loadout so that you know what perks you need to look out for, and then figure out if you can roll any enhanced perks for those weapons. I'm going to take my most common loadouts and try to make some god roll armor sets as examples. In PvP, I use a pulse rifle, shotgun, and grenade launcher, and in PvE, we'll say that I'm doing the raid, so it's a pulse rifle, shotgun, and sniper rifle, and I'll be on my titan. Unfortunately, there isn't a single enhanced pulse rifle perk in the entire game, so we're off to a bad start. We have two enhanced shotgun perks on arms and legs, so let's just look at legs first, which also have some other good perks on them. In PvE, I don't really value dexterity at all, stow speed and ready speed, whereas in PvP, I value it a lot. So for PvP, we'd look at the enhanced shotgun ready speed, but for PvE, we're looking for an energy generation perk instead. Which one? Well, it depends on how you play. Maybe you have enhanced ashes to assets on your helm where you'd want grenade energy a lot, thus you would want enhanced bomber. You know, just an example. Speaking of ashes to assets, let's just go to the helm next and work our way back down. We're probably going to be looking for pulse rifle targeting for PvP, but something like targeting may not have as much value to you in the PvE experience, so we would look for an energy perk instead. Again, depends on the situation that you're in. In the raid, I'm not really using my special or power weapons to actually kill things very often. I use them for damage on bosses, meaning ashes to assets or hands-on would be the play instead. In a strike using a rocket, heavy lifting would be the way to go if you're going for ad clear. Your reserve perk would be for whatever special or heavy that you're using. Moving to arms, we're looking at reload speed perks and melee and grenade perks. Now, reload speeds are pretty universally good, but I'm the kind of person who values ability energy over reload speed in a PvE setting. So for my arms, I would want enhanced impact induction or momentum transfer, assuming momentum transfer is buffed or fixed in some way later. In PvP, my pulse rifle has outlaw on it, so I don't really need another reload speed perk on top of that, but my shotgun could use some help, so we would grab enhanced shotgun reload speed. The scavenger perk would likely be shotgun. I don't really run into ammo problems with my pulse rifle, but maybe you're a hand cannon user and you do have ammo problems. Again, all depends. Chest armor is only unflinching, so we're looking for pulse rifle unflinching here, but if I'm in the raid using a sniper, maybe I grab enhanced unflinching sniper for safety purposes or if I'm sniping in PvP. On the chest armor as well, or maybe leg armor, this is where I would grab the special ammo finder. I think primary scavenger reserves and primary ammo finder are all not really that important, but if you find them important, then go for it. Class item is maybe where you want to pick the heavy ammo finder, since helm and arms have non-primary reserves and scavenger that you may want to utilize, but you're not going to get a ton of ammo from an individual reserve perk, so maybe you don't care that much, but if you stack two reserves, you get a little bit more, meaning you could use a heavy ammo finder on gloves. You see how fluid this situation is? It's, it's very, very fluid. I personally like recuperation over better already. I think health regen can still screw you sometimes in case you get hit right away, whereas recuperation is just one big chunk all at once, which I value a little bit more.
So, my PvP god roll armor would look like this, going from top down. Helm has pulse targeting and shotgun reserves, arms with enhanced shotgun reload and shotgun scavenger, chest with unflinching pulse and insert whatever for the other, boots are enhanced shotgun dexterity and whatever scavenger, with the class item having recuperation and maybe shotgun scavenger. My PvE raid god roll armor would look something like this, going from top down, Helm has enhanced ashes to assets with shotgun reserves. Arms are enhanced impact induction with shotgun scavenger. Chest is enhanced unflinching sniper with special ammo finder. Legs are distribution with pulse scavenger with the class item being recuperation and heavy ammo finder. Again, these are just examples with my specific loadouts. They don't include exotics and they're just one example. Your god roll armor will not be the same as mine, and you need to decide on loadouts that you use for X activity, and then build armor sets around those loadouts. Should heavy ammo finder ever be affected to the point where three stacking them gives a noticeable increase in power bricks found, things may change again where you could stack power ammo based perks as much as possible for a super energy build, something like that. Anyway, I hope this amalgamation of information was helpful in your search for the perfect armor set. We will explore the topic of weapon rolls in the very near future. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.